Hello guys, you're welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about moment. What is moment? Whenever you apply force to something, the effect of force on that thing is what we refer to as moment. And it is defined as the turning effect of force on an object. Moment is the turning effect of a force on an object. So the turning effect of a force on an object is what we refer to as moment. Now let's look at something. If I have an object like this, and this object has an axis. This axis, you can call it a fulcrum or you call it a point of rotation. Now, for me to know the moment of this body, if I applied a force here and I applied another force here while I also applied another force here, if I may ask, which of these force, this is force A, force B and force C. Which of these force will be easier to do what? To rotate this body about its axis? Absolutely, it's going to be force A. When I pull force A down, the body tends to rotate fast. That is going to do when I pull force B or force C. Force C will be very, very what? Difficult compared to B or a. So the turning effect of A about this axis is what we call moment. Do we understand that now? Now let's quickly see in our day-to-day -day life example of moment. If you're about to open your door, that is moment because the door handle has an axis of rotation. When you apply force to it, it rotates through that handle of rotation just because of the force that you apply to it. If you are about to open your drink, as you take your drink opener, you have the cover, that round surface of the, the circumference of the cover is the what? Is the axis of rotation of that cover. By the time you apply your cover opener, the force you apply to it causes that body to rotate about that axis. That is also what? Moment. Are we together now? And so on like that, just to save our time. Now, there is difference between moment and moment of a force. The moment of the force is what would definitely tell you the point that is very easier to apply your force about an axis of rotation. Just like I have here. The moment of force is what tells me that this will be the best place to rotate this body instead of this place or this place. Now, what is moment of a force? Moment of a force is the product of force and perpendicular distance. That is, if there is no perpendicular distance, moment is equal to zero. Are we together? Let's take for instance that this is the fulcrum, the axis of rotation of this body. And here is the force that I apply to the body. From here to this place is going to be the perpendicular distance because this force is acting vertically and this distance is acting perpendicular to this force. So the product of F and what? And L is what we refer to as the moment of F about the axis of rotation. Are we together? I'll take it again. Moment of force is quite different from moment. Moment of force is the product of force and perpendicular distance. That is, once the distance is not perpendicular, moment is equal to zero. Are we together now? Now, if you look at this now, this body, this is the fulcrum, that is the axis of rotation. This is the applied force. This applied force is perpendicular to this body. The perpendicular distance is the distance between this body and the axis of rotation. 
are we together? And you can see the distance is perpendicular to this. When you take the product of this force and this distance, what you have is the moment of this force. But if I have that, a force of 5 Newton is at this point, and I have the distance from here to this place, from this point to this place, I have the distance to be 2 meter. If they ask me to calculate for the moment of this force, the moment is going to be what? Zero. Why? Because this force is also parallel to its distance. Are we together now? Do we get this? Good. Moment is a vector quantity, is a vector quantity. Are we there? And it is measured in Newton meter. It's quite equivalent to work done. It is equivalent to work done. Why? Because work done is also force times distance. Likewise, moment is also force times distance. The difference is just that this is not just anyhow distance, but a perpendicular distance. That is, this one is having direction, but this one is not having direction. Are we together now? That is the difference between them, and that's why they are dimensionally what? Equal. That is, work done and moment, they are dimensionally equal. Are we together now? Good. Now, we've understand that when there is no perpendicular distance, moment is equal to zero. When there is perpendicular distance, the moment is going to be the product of force and the perpendicular distance. Now, let's quickly look at something before we go on into the main business. If I have that a body is suspended on an axis of rotation like this, which we call the fulcrum or the pivot, or you call it the knife edge. If I apply a force F, downward like this the distance between f and the fulcrum is x this x is the perpendicular distance therefore moment of this body like i said earlier is going to be force multiplied by what x and the unit would be a newton meter now let's now take for instance that this force is not acting vertically like this. How can we still determine the moment of the force? Let's take for instance that I have a body like this and here is the axis of rotation. Then the force is now applied in this direction such that it's making an angle theta with the body. So if this is force F, and the distance between the fulcrum and the point at which you apply the force is given to be L. Are we together? Now, this particular force is the same force that acts along this line like this. Are we together? And the line of action from, this is the line of action now. From this point now, we have what? This line of moment, this is the distance that is perpendicular to this force. Are we together now? So if you are taking your what? Your force alongside with this axis of rotation. This would be the perpendicular distance. And this perpendicular distance will refer it as moment. So if I call this X, which is the perpendicular distance to the force, don't make a mistake by taking this as your perpendicular distance. This body is not perpendicular to this. If you look at it, they met at a certain angle that is not equal to 90 degree, but it's greater than what? 30 degree. Or it might also be 30 degree, but it is not what? 90 degree. In other words, we can call it an acute angle. That is not actually where we want to look into, but we should just know that this force is not perpendicular to this. Now, this is the perpendicular distance. Are we just going to take it that moment is just Fx 
or what? No, we can't take it that moment is just fx. If you look at this diagram very well, this is a right angle triangle. Are we there? If you look at this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is L and the angle here is a vertically opposite to this theta. Here is also angle theta. For better understanding, let me take this diagram out. Then I will have something like this. Okay. I'll have something like this. So here is 90 degree. And here is angle theta. Here is x. And this is L. Now, I'm looking for the value of x. For me to get the value of x, I apply what? The sine rule. Sine theta, that is the trigonometric ratio rather. Sine theta equal x over L. If I have the sine theta equal x over L, if I cross multiply, I will have L sine theta equal x. Remember, x is the perpendicular distance. And moment, moment is the product of force and perpendicular distance. Therefore, our moment is going to be F multiplied by x which is the perpendicular distance and it's equal to L sine theta. So this is L sine of what? Theta. So this is going to be our moment. Do we understand this? Now, let's quickly see where to use this moment of a thing. We majorly consider moment, especially when we are looking for the equilibrium position of a body. Now, we are going to consider equilibrium in detail so that we can apply the moment of force appropriately. Because whenever you are applying force to one side of a body, if you don't apply equal and opposite force to the other side of the body, then the body might not be at equilibrium. Now, let's first of all understand what we call equilibrium. When is the body said to be at equilibrium? When a body is at equilibrium, it shows that the body is balanced. And when we say the body is balanced, it means the resultant force on that body is equal to zero. That is, if you take the summation of the all forces, your result must be zero. That shows that the body is at equilibrium. Now, how can we take the moment of a body if we actually want the body to be at equilibrium? Before we go, I will need to say something about moment again. I skip the moment of a couple. And why? Because I don't want to talk about couple in this class. I'm going to make a video that explains every concept of couple. But when we talk about the moment of a couple, moment of a couple is called tug. Are we together now? You know, this is moment. But when we talk about moment of a couple, it is called tug. When you say tug, it is also a vector quantity and it has similar characteristics as this moment that we calculate here. But when it is time, I will do more explanation on that. Back to the equilibrium that I'm explaining. You can apply force to a body in different ways. I will consider the first way of applying force to a body. And that is when the forces are parallel on the body. You are not to what? Find this topic difficult. Just pay maximum attention. You tend to understand everything about the topic. Now let's see. Let's take for instance that I have a body AB. And uh, this is the axis of rotation of the body, that is the fulcrum, or you call it knife edge, or you call it pivot, whichever one. Just know that it is axis of rotation. Just like if I suspend this marker on this my finger. You see, this my finger will be its axis of rotation. Although if I take my time, you'll find out that this marker will balance immediately the force at this other side, equivalent the force at this other side. The marker tends to balance. Are we together? Now, if I apply the force 
F1 in this direction and I apply another force F2 along this side. Watch what will happen. If I have another force, let me call this F3 and I have another force here, I'll call this F4. Now, if you look at all these forces, they are parallel to each other. F1 is parallel to F2. F4 is parallel to F3. How can you make this body balance? Now, the reason why I'm drawing this is for me to explain the condition for equilibrium of A parallel forces. When parallel forces act on the body, what are the conditions? that needs to be satisfied before the body can be at equilibrium. Condition one is that the clockwise moment, that is the way your clock move, the clock move like this, and that is the clockwise moment. If you take product of F2 and its perpendicular distance R1, this is R2, R3, and R4. When you take the moment of F2 about this axis of rotation, I would uh, we call it the clockwise moment. The clockwise moment. Are we together? And by the time you take the moment of F1, that will be anti-clockwise about the same point. So the anti-clockwise moment. For this body to be at equilibrium, the first condition is that the clockwise moment, the clockwise moment must equal to the anti-clockwise moment. Once the moment of clockwise is equal to the moment of anti-clockwise, then the body will be at equilibrium. That's the first condition. The second condition is that the sum the sum of downward force, or let me say the sum of force in one side must equal to the sum of force in the other side. That is, sum of force, the sum of forces upward must equal to the sum of forces downward. The sum of forces downward. Upward force must equal to downward force. Are we together? Okay. Now, before I move on to the third condition, let me quickly say something about the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment. If you take the moment of F4, this is anti-clockwise. And when you take the moment of F3, it is clockwise. Sum of clockwise moment, that is, the moment F2 R1 plus F3 R3 must equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise, that is F4 R4 plus F1 R2, F1 R2. The sum of the clockwise moment must equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moment. That is the first condition. The second condition is, if you sum the forces, the downward forces, F1 and F2, if you add this together, it must give you the upward force, F3 plus F4, for this body to be at equilibrium. And lastly, the resultant force, resultant force of this body must equal to zero. Why am I giving you these conditions? These conditions are what will actually help you whenever you want to solve a problem on the moment. Are we together? Because in most cases, what they used to ask is, what will be the force that will make the system balance? At what distance from the center or at what distance from the axis of rotation can so 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 force be placed in order for the body to be at equilibrium. Those are similar questions that they do ask. Or they can tell you 
If this body is at equilibrium, what is the value of the unknown? These are ways to get out of those troubles. Now, if you want to take your moment, always take your moment about the axis of rotation. Take note of that. Take your moment about the axis of rotation or you take your moment about the unwanted force. The force that you know you are not calculating for or that you know is not going to be in any way assist you in solving your question. You don't want, you just take it, take moment about that particular force. That is an unwanted force. You can take your moment about that. It make your question reduce in complexity. Are we together now? Now, this is for action of parallel forces. What if the forces are not parallel? When forces are not parallel to each other, what are the conditions for such body to be at equilibrium? Okay? The condition for non-parallel forces, I would like to explain three things before we go on. One, collinearity. Two, concurrence. Three, coplanarity. How to get now? When you talk about collinear, these are collinear. When you have a line like this, or forces that are like this, so that we not wait, waste much time on that. I think my diagram is not just sweet. Okay. If you look at this now. This is what linear collinearity. That is, they are both linear. Collinear. Are we together now? Hmm? Collinear. Now, when you talk about coplanar, coplanar, when you talk about coplanar, you can have them like this and like this. Are we together now? That is, they are not coplanarity, that is, they are not on the same line. That is, they are not collinear. When you have a coplanar forces like this, they are not collinear. Are we together? Good. This is collinear, they are both on a straight line. This is coplanar, that is, they are not collinear. They are not parallel to each other like this. The last one is concurrence. When you talk about being concurrent, it means they have same axis of action. Are we together now? They act at the same point. We must understand these three things if we are to state the condition of non-parallel forces. And the first condition is that what? They must be planar that is they must not be collinear are we together now for them to be at equilibrium they must not be collinear are we there they must be concurrent that is they need to have what a meeting point they need to have a meeting point if they are going to be at equilibrium making the second condition the third condition is that you can resolve them to a triangle. As I have these forces like this, I can resolve them to become a triangle or any other polygon. Are we together now? You can represent them with a polygon or you represent them with a triangle. Anyone? Do you understand that now? Let's take for instance, I want to find the value of one of these forces so that they can be at equilibrium. I can just resolve this. Let me use different colors so that you'll be able to identify them. If this one acts like this, and I have another one like this, and then I have another one like this. Since they are concurrent, I can represent them in a triangle. So I will have this, I will have this, and then I will have this. Have you seen it now? This one is this. 
This one is this. This one is this. I'm missing it now. Then I can use whatever theorem of triangle that suits the question to solve. And I get my answer. Now, I know you might not still understand how to go about the calculation despite all this that we've said about the theoretical aspect of it. Let's take some questions to analyze all these concepts. Question number one now. A force of 5 Newton hats at a point Y on a rod X, Y, Z as shown. So here is the rod X, X, Y and Z. So, in the diagram, if x, y is 2 meter, x, y, that is the distance between x and y, is 2 meter, what is the moment of the force about point x? You can pause the video and give this problem a trial, okay? And when you draw, you keep watching. Okay? We understand that moment is the product of force and perpendicular distance, right? In order for us to solve this question, we need to locate the perpendicular distance first. The distance between x and y is along the same line with the force, 5 Newton, that we are looking for its moment, right? Since we don't have any perpendicular distance to this particular force, that shows that the moment equal 0 Newton. Do we understand that now? Meter. Do you get this now? That is, once there is no perpendicular distance, moment about such force will become zero. Good. Question two. In the diagram, in the diagram below, what is the value of W? Before I solve this question, you might be given another question such that they will ask you, this is W, sorry, so that you'll be hard to look for the weight of that particular material. Though we don't cover that in our theoretical class, but let me quickly chip that in now. When you talk about the weight of a body, try to locate the center of gravity of that body. The center of gravity of a body is where the all masses or the all forces acting on that, on that body tends to act on. Are we together now? So, for this body, W is what we are looking for, right? So, in case the question is being twisted in another day and they are asking you for the weight of such body, you should just know that it will be at the center. Though I'm not telling you that this is at the center. I'm just clearing something out. In the diagram, in the diagram below, what is the value of W? How can we get the value of W? Let's look. W is a force. And it has a perpendicular distance, isn't it? Now, like I told you earlier, I said it's always good. And uh, the question will be less complex if you can take your moment about the axis of rotation. Or about the unwanted force. Do you get us now? So I can decide now to take my moment about this axis of rotation. Or, I take my moment about T. I, I you saying something now? So, if I'm taking my moment about T, I will arrive at the same answer as if I'm taking my moment about Y. The reason why I can take my moment about T is because T is an unwanted force. And the reason why I can take my moment about this fulcrum is because this is the axis of rotation. Do you understand that now? So, let's quickly do that. Taking moment... Taking moment about y, you know, the axis of rotation is labeled y. Therefore, if I take my moment about it, I will have this and I will have this. I send that now. So here is clockwise and this is anti-clockwise. Are we together now? Because these are the two forces acting on this body. So they are the two, the two forces. I'm going to take the moment of the two forces. The one I'm looking for and the one that I don't need. Do you understand that now? Good. If I'm taking the moment about this now, let's see. I will have that W multiplied by 
the distance between W and Y is 1 meter plus 1 meter, and that is 2 meter. So W multiplied by 2 equal the anticlockwise moment is going to be T multiplied by the distance between T and Y, which is 1 meter. And T is equals to what? 20. So I have 20 multiplied by 1 meter. Good. This is 2 meter, 20 newton, and here is 1 meter. So I'll have 2 meter W equal 20 newton meter. Then my W equal 20 newton meter divided by 2 meter. So W equal 10 newton. And that will be the value for W. Do we see how we go about that? Good. So, let's quickly look into the next question now. Question 3, question 4. The figure above shows a seesaw which is exactly in balance. The weight of the mass on it are 50 kilogram, X kilogram, and 15 kilogram as shown. They are placed at distance of one and a half meter one and a half meter and two meter from the pivot respectively. Find the value of X. We are looking for the value of X in this particular, oh, oh, sorry, I think I pronounced this wrongly. It is what? In balance, that is their balance. If this body is balanced and uh, we are given 50 kilogram that is one and a half meter away from the pivot. And we are given x kilogram that is one and a half meter away from the pivot. And we are given 15 kilogram that is two meter away from the pivot. Automatically, remember, automatically this particular meter rule is going to be three and a half meter. Do you agree with me? That is from here. To this place is going to be three and a half meter because if from here to this place is two meter and from here to this place is one and a half meter then the entire length is three and a half meter let's get that clear so the first thing that we need to do now is to redraw the diagram but i won't do that here i'm just going to use the same diagram i get it now so we're going to take the moment about the pivot the solution is taking moments about the pi volts. So we're going to take the moment of all these masses about this pi volts. So if I take this now, I'll take this and I'll also take this. This is going to be clockwise, clockwise, and this is anti-clockwise. Remember, sum of clockwise moment must equal to sum of the anti-clockwise moment. From here to this place is 2 meter. So I'm going to have that. The clockwise moment is going to be 15 kilogram multiplied by 2 meter plus X kilogram multiplied by 1.5 meter is the same thing as 3 over 2 meter. That is for the clockwise moment. Then for the anti-clockwise moment, I will have 50 to multiply 3 over 2. So 50 multiplied by 3 over 2 meter. Now, the condition for the equilibrium is going to be that the clockwise moment must equal to the anti-clockwise moment. Therefore, 15 multiplied by 2, that will give me 30 kilogram meter plus x multiplied by this, that will be 3x over 2 in meter, equal 50 times 3, 50 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 in kilo, kilogram meter. Are we together? Good. So we are going to have that 3x in meter over 2, equal this will be 1 and this is 25 25 times 3 will give us 75 so we have 75 kilogram meter minus 
30 kilogram meter. Do we get this now? Therefore, 3x meter over 2 equal, this will give us uh, 45 kilogram meter. If I cross multiply, I have 3x meter equal 90 kilogram meter. Divide both sides by 3. X equal, uh, by 3 meter rather, 90 kilogram meter divided by 3 meter. Meter will cancel with meter. 3 here 1 and 3 here is going to be what? 30. So the correct answer is going to be 30 kilogram. So the mass X is 30 kilogram. Sorry for managing that space. Okay. If that should be the case, here is going to be 30 kilograms. So, if you want to cross check your answer, put this 30 kilogram into this value here. If it is not equivalent to what you have here, then the solution is wrong. Because that simply means the body will not be at equilibrium. Do you understand that now? So, the second question now, I will clean this now, then I'm going to solve this. So, question number four. Oh, this question is kind of tedious, but it's simple. Now let's see. In the figure above, MN is a light uniform meter rule pivoted at O, the 80 centimeter mark. For us to solve this question perfectly, I'll have to redraw this diagram. No choice. So, I'll draw MN first. Here is M. And here is N. So if it is uniform meter rule, then it shows that from here, from here to this place, is 100 centimeter. Are we there? From here to this place is 100 centimeter because it's a meter rule. Now, let's go on. Pivoted at O, the 80 centimeter mark. So the pivot is here at point O, and it is 80 centimeter, that is from zero to 80 centimeter. Let's go on. A load of three kilograms is suspended on the rule at L, the 10 centimeter mark. That is from here to this place, we have a load of three kilograms, and the distance from the origin is 10 centimeter. Are we there? Okay, let's go on. If the rule is kept in equilibrium by a string RP, RP, that is, if they make this to be at equilibrium by a spring RP, are we there? Fixed at, okay, fixed at P, and attached to the rule at R, the 20 centimeter mark. That is R from here to this place, R is 20 centimeter. From this point to this point here is 20 centimeter. Okay, let me put it here, 20 centimeter. Are we there? Good, let's go on. Okay, find the value of the tension. We are looking for the value of the tension T. And uh, here is 30 degree. Okay? So, let's see how we can go about this. Okay? How can I solve this? Since this is the body, this is the, this is the tension that keeps this body at equilibrium. And we are looking for the value of that tension. At first, let me first of all draw the line of action here. The line of action is said to be perpendicular to this plane, right? So, I need to look for the value of this line of action. This is T, which is the hypotenuse, Abi, and here is what? Here is 30 degree. Remember that OP is equivalent to the value of R and this point here. Let me call this one Q. QR is equivalent to OP. Are you saying it now? So if I can get the value of OP, is the same thing as the value of QR, isn't it? Good. So I can say sine of 30, sine of 30 degree is equal to QR 
divided by t. Are we together? So if I cross multiply, I have QR equal T sine of 30 degree. Do you understand this now? Good. If you do, let me call this equation 1. Then I will take the moment about the pi volt here. So if I take the moment about the pi volt, that shows that QR, QR, which is a force T sine 30, is going to be multiplied by, this is 20 centimeter, and here is 80 centimeter. It shows that the distance between R and O is going to be 80 minus 20. And that will just give us 60 centimeter. Therefore, QR is to be multiplied with 60 centimeter. Since we are taking moment about the pi volt, are we together? Therefore, we have that it is clockwise. We have that the clockwise moment is T sine 30 multiplied by 60 centimeter. Then we have to take the moment of this 3 kilogram about this pi volt also. Remember, this is from here to this place, 10 centimeter. The distance between L and 80 is going to be 80 minus 10 centimeter. Therefore, this will give us 70 centimeter. So we have the anti-clockwise moment to equal 3 multiplied by 70. Whereby, we have this to give us 210 in Newton meter. Now, T sin 30, sin 30 is 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2 times 60, that will give us 30, isn't it? Thus, this is 30T in meter. Sorry, 30T centimeter. This is also supposed to be in centimeter. Okay. Now, clockwise moment will equal anti-clockwise moment since the body is at equilibrium. Therefore, we have 30 T centimeter equal 210 Newton centimeter. T equal 210 Newton centimeter divided by 30 Newton, sorry, 30 centimeter. Centimeter will cancel centimeter. 30 year 1 and 30 year will give us what? 70. We have that T equal 70 Newton. Do you understand this now? So, I really appreciate you guys and I appreciate your support so far. Don't forget to like this video, share and subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do. Thank you.